Good morning, everyone. How's everyone doing this morning? <laughs> Hope uh, all having a great day so far. Start with a word of prayer. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Father, so much for this day and for uh, all the blessings you give us, and that uh, that we all can uh, get something out of your Word today. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. Amen. I turned my phone down to myself twice. <laughs> uh, so today, continue with Peter's journeys. We're in uh, it's the third day we've been doing this, and uh, he is on the. They have gone up to Caesarea Philippi. Again, I'm not uh, following all of his journeys, just uh, picking out a few where Peter was kind of the center of attention. Uh, of course, he was with Jesus the entire time. Uh, through his travels, but uh, I'm mainly focusing on times that Peter was uh, was in the limelight, uh, that particular episode, and uh, after the uh, after Jesus' uh, death and resurrection, uh, I'll con we'll continue on, and then I'll actually start into the actual journeys of him when he was uh, after uh, Pentecost time frame. But today we're in Caesarea Philippi, uh, and this is uh, what I'm going to call Peter's best day and worst day. <laughs> uh, he uh, he started off really well, and then uh, it went downhill from there. But uh, stop in Matthew 16:13, and uh, what I try to do is compare the the, the, the gospels that it appears in. So today's going to be a little bit lengthy because the, the story is in all, almost all the gospels except John. I'll start reading here. In uh, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, "Whom do men say that I, that I, the Son of Man, are, am?" And they said, "Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets." And he said unto them, "But whom say ye that I am?" And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon by jo Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. I want to emphasize something here that a lot of people uh, like to take this particular uh, and give some kind of symbology that Peter is the rock. And I truly believe that if you were standing there and watching this, that uh, Jesus was actually pointing to himself because Peter does mean, uh, it actually means stone, not rock, uh, his name. And I think that uh, he was using an analogy here to, to indicate to himself because we all know that that uh, the rock reference all through the Bible speaks of Jesus himself. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. At this point, I'm just going to bring in a few uh, pictures that I found. It's interesting that he said that because they actually call Caesarea Philippi gateway to uh, hell. <laughs> I wonder if uh, that's if it got its name because of this verse or if it got its name because of uh, the type of problems they had there. But I found a few pictures and. Uh, this is one of uh, what it would have looked like in Jesus' time, uh, artist rendition. And uh, if you see where it's at, it's way up top there. Uh, you see uh, where Copernicum is. And uh, if you keep uh, going up the Jordan River, and you see it way up near the top of this map. Oh, some of the pictures from yesterday. Oh, there's another. Uh, here's another picture of it. What it looks like now, the ruins. And there's a better map showing where Caesarea Philippi is. It's actually when it says on the coast. It's actually on the coast of the uh, of a river, not a not a lake. Uh, 
I thought I had another picture of it. Okay, that was it. So I'll continue reading. Now, I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Oh, and, it's, and they call it the, uh, that's what they call the area, is the gates of hell. And I'll give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whosoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whosoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now let's take a couple of the other. Uh, Mark goes on to say that, uh, starting in uh, Mark eight twenty seven. And Jesus went out and his disciples into the towns of Caesarea Philippi. And by the way, he asked his disciples, saying unto them, Who do men say that I am? And he answered, John the Baptist, but some say Elias, and others one of the prophets. Very similar to Matthew. And he said, saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Peter answered and said unto him, Thou art the Christ. And he charged them that they should tell no man of him. And then over in Luke, we got nine, it's in 918. This one starts uh, just after the uh, feeding of the 5,000. So it uh, starts a little bit different. And it came to pass as he was alone praying, his disciples were with him. And he asked them saying, whom say the people that I am? And they answering say John the Baptist, but some say Elias, and others say that one of the old prophets is risen again. And he said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Peter answering said, The Christ of God. And he straightly charged them and commanded them to tell no man this thing. So that was uh, uh, pretty much the... Uh, that particular incident. Now I'm going to go back to Matthew, and I think we left off in verse 19. Yes. Uh, 20 actually says the same thing the other ones. Then charged he, his disciples, said that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. Then he goes on uh, to start speaking, and this gets into where Peter kind of uh, something happens, and uh, it almost seems like. Uh, Satan uh, gets involved here. So we'll read here, uh, starting in verse 21. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things unto the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, But it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. No, Peter, he always saw. Uh, he just had a, a great moment, uh, and the Lord praised him for it. And here he is, he's going to be rebuked. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. So he had to turn around and uh, kind of reminds me sometimes when we have to deal with our own children. Uh, you know, you want to, one minute you're giving them uh, praises and uh, they're doing great, and the next minute we have to discipline them. But Jesus went on to use this example, and he said unto the disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Something that we're all looking forward to someday. Verily I say unto you, there will be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. We'll probably look at that uh, thing tomorrow. Then in Mark, uh, this particular, when I leave off, Mark, yeah. In 8.31, a uh, similar thing. And he began to teach him that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. And he spoke that saying openly and Peter took him and began to rebuke him. 
But when he had turned about and looked on his disciples, he rebuked Peter, saying, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men. And when he had called the people unto him with his with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whoso will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Sounds like there was more than just uh, the disciples there when it says, uh, he said, uh, he called the people unto him. There's some evidence too that uh, it, not just the disciples used to follow him around. There was quite a, uh, quite a gathering. Uh, we know that some of the ladies used to follow also, uh, Mary and uh, and uh, Martha, I think. I know Mary Magdalene for sure. For whoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospel, the same shall save it. And we'll go on to Luke's uh, rendition of this. Let's see where I leave off. Yeah, right here. <laughs> Saying, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be slain and be raised the third day. Pretty much the three Gospels are, uh, are pretty exact of each other. And he said to them all, If any man shall come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Luke didn't mention the Peter incident uh, portion of this. I find it kind of interesting that uh, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. So in this particular case, it was interesting that this particular incident was almost exactly the same by all three Gospels. So that was today's lesson that, uh, uh, that uh, I think that important lesson today is that we know that Peter <laughs> was always one to kind of jump to conclusions huh? and, uh, and and even though he had a, a great moment there uh, on the first part of it uh, that he uh, so I think it's a the lesson I get from it anyways is that uh, even though sometimes we succeed in our in our in our quest for life uh, that uh, there'll be times too that we are uh, that we need a little correction too and I think uh, I think the thing that I've learned all of my, my life is that uh, when God is correcting you, uh, that's a good thing uh, because uh, it means he loves you. And, that, uh, and sometimes we don't like the correction. And I guess the important thing to remember is to uh, take that lesson to heart and not uh, repeat it. <laughs> so on that, I, uh, today's prophecy uh, moment, kind of along the same lines, uh, we see here that uh, going back to that verse where uh, Peter, let me find it again, <clears throat> right here. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And this was actually prophesied uh, and, uh, in Isaiah 9 6. This would be about 700 years earlier. Isaiah said, I realize that uh, here he's prophesying three things. Uh, and we know being that the Christmas season is coming up, we're all very familiar with this verse. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And this is, uh, this is the portion we're in right now. Unto us a son is given. And it's important to know that, uh, that, that Peter recognized at this point that Jesus is the son of God and that uh, to confirm his deity. I'll uh, just finish the verse. And the government shall be upon his shoulders, which we look forward to uh, coming up uh, in the thousand year millennium reign. Uh, so that's still future. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. I think we've all seen a Christmas card or two with that verse on it. So uh, that's our prophecy moment for today that Peter here recognized that <clears throat> this prophecy had come true. So that's all I had for today. Maybe a little bit shorter day today. And uh, I'll end with a close uh, word of prayer. Oh dear Heavenly Father, uh, thank you for this, to know that you are always there to, uh, to uh, praise us and also to correct us. Uh, and we appreciate that Lord and thank you so much that, uh, that we are worthy to be, to be praised and to be corrected. Thank you so much, Lord, for this day and for all you do for us. 
In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. And you guys have a great day. And I'll talk to you again. Uh, well, actually, today's Friday. So <clears throat> I'll talk to you again Monday. And uh, don't forget that Sunday at 9 a.m. we have our church service. Uh, and at, uh, and our regular main uh, worship service at 10. Evening service at 5 p.m. And so we'll see you all then. Have a great day.